how good was it to enter SEC play on a really strong performance against a good Lipsman team? Yeah, I think it's hard to predict how Tuesday affects Friday once you start league play, and that, that goes for every team that I've ever been a part of and every team in the country. And sometimes there's no correlation. Uh, so it, it feels good, but, but I think it feels good more for the fact that our games are always competitive with them. They're well coached. Um, I think they've already played seven or eight SEC games or, or games against SEC opponents. Um, so the fact that we played a clean game, got a bunch of guys involved, uh, didn't make very many mistakes, you know, just kind of focusing on tonight is, is what makes it a good feeling. What have you seen from Mallory the last week, week plus? It looks like he's really hitting the ball well. Yeah, I mean, doing what he's capable of doing, settling in and just playing ball and, you know, not going to hit a home run every game or make a sports center play every game on defense, but he's capable of doing really good things uh, in every facet of the game. Uh, and so are some of our other guys, as long as they just are present and playing the game that, that they love, you know, just playing baseball. But you turn it into science or you try too hard, you try and make up for lost time, and maybe in his instance, um, it's not going to go as well for you. But, but also, if you reflect on some of his at-bats, Hunter Ensley is able to get one over the fence. Zane Denton's not you know, just barely miss getting one over the fence. I mean, it's kind of flip-flop for those guys at times. Uh, they've both barreled up a ton of balls. Sometimes they get rewarded, sometimes they don't. Um, but, but I think regardless of results, the kid's fun to, to watch play. That, that is Maui, and um, we're all happy he's in our dugout. Just illness for Blake? Yeah, and, um, you know, Doc, myself, uh, Woody, our trainer, all said no, it, it's not – we don't need other guys sick. He doesn't look good. And Blake wants to play, wants to play, wants to play. So we, we kind of came up with a schedule where he was here for first pitch and he was warmed up. And we were going to use him in a pinch hit situation. Um, but it went by where we didn't need him, so we sent him home. But um, he wasn't in very good shape. I, I think a couple guys have had that bug, and it seems to go through their system relatively quick. So knock on a lot of wood or whatever, I think he'll be fine for the weekend. But. Um, Warrior spirit, spirit out of him. He wanted to go, but uh, I think we made the right decision as as a coaching staff. I mean, you've used a lot of different outfield combinations throughout this non-conference yeah. slate. Do you feel like you have some more clarity in terms of what you want to do out there come Friday or SEC play? Yeah, I, I think a few of the guys can swing the bat and need to prove themselves a little better defensively. A couple of the guys are superior defensively to the guys, so um, I, I think we're going to use that combo to complement themselves, if that, if that makes sense. Uh, some situations call for defense more, some calls for offense more. I think Dylan Dryling is a guy who needs to be in the lineup uh, more games than not uh, and, and may eventually get some action in the outfield, if not um, you know, in that DH spot. But I, I think there's some clarity, uh, but there's also been some reps accumulated. So if guys make mistakes, it's not going to be because they're unfamiliar with that position they're standing in on that occasion. And it's not going to be because they're unfamiliar with the guy to the right or left of them uh, that they're playing next to. And uh, we'll continue to just kind of roll with what we want. And hey, we've gone back in that locker room and I've criticized myself or uh, said I'm open to suggestions because, you know, didn't think the right decision was made here or there. And then there's been other times too where we, we felt really good. I mean, Christian Scott is going into the game for defense, but we pinch run him and he might be the only guy on our team that scores on that play today. So you look smart. And uh, again, I'm not patting ourselves on the back because uh, we talked about it last Tuesday with a very difficult game that we played. When you win, you made all the right decisions. When you lose, you didn't. And in, in the course of a game, um, there's still one our first year we, we won that I now I know I tried to sabotage it. But at the time, I didn't. So um, here's to gathering more information and making what we think is the best decision at the time. and then. You know, we'll see how it plays out. Kind of on that, how, how difficult is it to, to not have tears in that lineup? I know he's made probably, what, six straight starts? Yeah, no, he's, he's certainly capitalized. And what he's done is he's removed the excuse of, I need to be out there every day to get in a rhythm and all that. He was plugged right in there after getting minimal at-bats, I think really the fewest on the team, um, or at least relative to a couple other guys in that same situation, and got right in there and did it. And. Uh, you know, every now and then might swing and miss or, or may not look like a superstar in the box, but he's so competitive within the same at bat. Like today, he might make an adjustment with two strikes and smokes that one to right field. And again, um, I don't know what the phrase is, but uh, a, a knockout punch or in soccer, uh, don't make fun of me. I played a little bit. You know, a goal scorer is very, very 
uh, you know, very powerful, or Brett Hull, I grew up with in St. Louis, who now lives in Tennessee. A goal scorer is deadly, a knockout punch guy is deadly, and a guy in baseball who can touch it and make it go a long, long way is valuable as well. So he's, he's one of a few guys we got like that. What did you learn about your team in these first 18 games? Um, you know, just more about them in general. Uh, I, I wish I had an either entertaining answer or informative answer, but I don't think there's been one thing that has stuck out. Um, I think they're talented. I think they like playing with each other. I think they realize um, they need to learn from their mistakes if they want to play better baseball in May than they did in February. Um, I think they realize, too, when they come to the park, it's a coaching staff that, yeah, well, when we get to the nitty gritty, this is going to be our lineup. But we're not afraid to use anybody in any situation. So to come to the park and not be ready to pitch or not be able to go into a game or if it's, you know, the weather's a little inclement like it was tonight, to not do whatever you got to do to make sure your legs are loose and you can go, go on go, um, you know, would be foolish on their part. So um, the story's being written. And I think if there's one thing that stands out about other teams, we've stared one run games in the face. Um, probably haven't, it probably hadn't gone in our favor as often as we would like it to. Um, but the way you get good at playing really close games is playing really close games. It's kind of like anything else that you practice. So. I think that's a benefit going into league play. But again, it, it'll be fun for everybody. Some leagues have already started playing each other. Uh, but when you do, it's still just baseball. But it, the, the side stuff, these interviews, the stories you guys write, the fans, it just makes it a little bit more fun, a little more entertaining. Looking ahead, what do you expect from, from Missouri this weekend? Um, we'll look at it. Um, gosh, now I forget who I was talking to. I thought it was Jimmy Himes was grilling me about Missouri. And we played Lipscomb tonight. so. <laughs> It's, I don't know if it's a bad job of coaching or a good job of coaching, but that's just kind of the one day at a time thing is the way our video coordinator works. Um, our, our, you know, Richard Jackson is kind of involved in scouting reports too and the way Frank does it with the hitters. Um, so that's kind of how we've done it. I do know they returned several guys back from last year's team. They had a, a really good team, uh, but lost a couple guys to the draft, but not as many as we did. They bring some core guys, so, um, but can't, I guess if you can't speak that intelligently on anything, you um, don't say too much. But um, they're an SEC team. They got plenty of talent. Uh, every SEC team is a, a probably better at home. Um, and then their coaching staff has been around a while. They know us, they know the league, and they know what they're doing. It's been a while since you've been on the road. How do you think your team's going to handle that uh, after 15 games here? Yeah, sometimes you get anxious to, to do so. Um, and it was unique this year going on the road to start the year, so there was no kind of wait around. Um, and it was a neutral site deal. So if I'm them, I'm, I'm anxious to get on the road. It's spring break, they don't have class tying them down uh, and spend some more time with each other. It's when you truly become a team, I think, or, or you would maybe advance a little bit in some categories because you're forced to spend time around one another. Um, but we haven't played a road you know, opponent. Again, that was a neutral site tournament or a tournament where we played three different teams. Um, so now we've kind of settled into a routine where you play a team three times in a row and, uh, you know, it's nice to win one game, but you're trying to win the series. And that's what we'll be trying to do this weekend. You talked about team chemistry a little bit. Y'all added a few new guys this year. How do you think your team chemistry has come along through this non-conference play? Yeah, it's advanced. I think it's parallel the first semester of school from August to, you know, really the start of November, middle of November is when we finished our fall was drastic, like drastic, crazy drastic. And then you have some, you know, Christmas time and the end of the semester, we have some meals and stuff like that before they go home. And so the whole first semester was a big growth. Well, now because of game action and you get upset when you lose a game, you get happy. I think it's the incline of improvement in the area you're talking about is no longer a good slope. It's, it's kind of like this. And, and so, you know, everything's got pros and cons. When you got Trey Lipscomb and Cortland Lawson or um, almost too close. Those guys, you know, were like brothers, literally, and I th they would call e each other brothers. There's not very far you can go in the chemistry standpoint. It's like rock solid. So pros and cons, there's no improvement, but there's, you know, a steady rock there. And in this case, it's different. You know, Maui and Zane, if we're going to stick with short and third, don't know each other that well, but that means every week they're around each other. They've made a huge, significant jump and just how they communicate on the field, the relationship off the field, locker room, dugout, all that stuff. Maybe one more. All right, we appreciate your time.